Listen, one thing you need to know, when this eyebrow goes up, shenanigans. Now, from buy you a drink to bartender, T-Pain has got the hits from beginning to end, especially throughout my childhood and my adulthood as well. What am I talking about? I love his song, I Like That, with Kehlani is out right now. Now, since 2004, he has delivered bangers on bangers to radio, collaborating with almost everyone from Kanye West to Taylor Swift. His distinctive sound influenced the auto-tune revolution of the early 2000s. He's truly a revolutionary, and his longevity is due in part to the fact that he remains an innovator to this day. He's honed his craft, and he's also just an extremely layered and uh, just an awesome guy. Hey, listen, y'all, Tallahassee's favorite son, T-Pain, is joining me right now on After Six to talk about music and, of course, his legacy within hip-hop. Hey, T Pain, let's get it. <laughs> What's was, going on, <laughs> sir? How you doing, man? Oh man, that was extra. That hey. went crazy. <laughs> Who wrote that script? Good God, you need to be writing hardbacks. Hey, yes, sir. I mean, you T Pain, man. Listen, you done had me bopping and gyrating and jigging since I was in like middle school. So you know, we had to get you right. We had to get you right. Now you call yourself absolutely, a, absolutely. a rapper turned singer. You know, that's where we all mm -hmm. know you from. But you're now an author, and you have a book out called "Can I Mix You a Drink?" Uh, tell us about uh -huh. the book and uh, mm -hmm. what we can find in there. Uh, basically, it's 50 cocktails from my life and career uh, since I started my journey on um, where I am now. You know, the drinks I've tried along the way and my spin on them and, you know, uh, getting getting together with a, a actual master mixologist. It, it, it helped it kind of bring everything home and really make it professional and, you know, make it uh, consumable because some of my drinks is too strong for people. So, you know, some, some of it had to get down back. <laughs> so, no, but it's, uh, I mean, it's a fun book. It's, it's, it's in place of a memoir or anything like that. I didn't want to, like, make a book that was, like, about my life. We all got the same story. Everybody mm -hmm. know. We all grew up hard. Uh, you know, it was tough, a, a terrible relationship with parents. And uh, it, we, we all heard the story a thousand times. That, and nobody needed that part from me, so I figured I could, I would, uh, you know, create something that people could actually use, mm -hmm. and something that you know people would open multiple times instead of a one good read, and then all right, heard that story, and we we out of here. So mm -hmm. I, I wanted to make this book that people would enjoy at parties, open it up multiple times, even when they're alone. You know, just a better book. Than bragging <laughs> about myself. <laughs> hey, listen, y'all heard the man. Uh, be careful making some of these drinks because they are strong. They they, they definitely going to get Absolutely. you there. Now, yeah, T-Pain, I got to pick yeah. your brain, man. You've been in the industry for so long, but you continue to innovate, recreate yourself yeah. as a brand, but then you also continue to make the hits. Everything is always, uh, it's always unique and it's always different. <laughs> so talk about your creative process, man. How do you come up with this stuff? It's it's not something that I necessarily come up with. It's just it's something that it's something that comes to me most of the time. You know, it's just it's just like man, I would really like if things went like this. Like even when I was younger and I would sing songs on the radio at home, uh, my older brother Rashid would would make fun of me, and then I would go tell my dad. I'm like, Dad, Rashid making fun of me, and he's like, What's going on? I'm like, He's making fun of me because I'm singing songs how I think they should go. And I'm not singing it the regular way, and I don't think they should go that way. And, and then my dad started exploring, well, why do you think they should go a different way? And I'm like, I think it'd just be better if it did this and it did this. And he was like, I'm probably going to go buy you some music equipment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man, that was funny. That was funny, bro. It was pretty, it was just, you know, it was just, it was a no-brainer, man. It's something uh -huh. that, you, you know, when you see your kids start doing abnormal things and, you know, things that you would only expect an adult to be doing and, and thinking, you know, uh, irrational at the time. It seemed irrational. But, you know, when you see your kid uh, have, have diverse thinking, you you kind of, you know, push the envelope a little bit and see where this goes. I, I felt like my dad took appropriate action and everything he did. And, man, I, just, I love him for it to this day. So, we, you know, everything's all good. I, I, I feel like there's not... Uh, a formula that I have to come up with anything. It's just like, when something makes me feel good, I, I think it's good and I put it out in, in hopes that somebody is as crazy as me. Mm. That's the same way Quentin Tarantino make movies. Yes, sir. He don't make movies for anybody. He makes movies that he enjoys and hopefully somebody likes that much blood. Yeah. I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's just how I make music. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, folks at home, you just heard this man. He is great because he is who he is and he has honed his craft <laughs> and he likes what he is doing. That's the easiest way for anybody <laughs> to become great. That's so it. thank you for uh, sharing that with everyone. But now, you know, I got to ask you about auto tunes. 
What brought mm -hmm, you to auto-tunes? Mm -hmm. Because you truly re revolutionized music. There's still folks, you know, messing around with auto-tunes in their music right yeah. now today. So what brought you to that? Uh, Jennifer Lopez. I heard it on one of her songs. And, um, I mean, she only used it for a few seconds, but I was like, man, I want to do a whole song like that. And it just took me on a, a two-year journey of trying to find it because I didn't know the name of it because obviously, you know, if you're not in the industry, you're not just going to have access to things like that. So, man, after a while, I found it. Uh, I tried it out a few different ways. The first first song I did all the way through with it was uh, a remake of uh, Black Street's uh, Creep. Mm. And after that, I was like, oh, I'm using this all the time now. It's, mm. it's just great and it's fun and makes me sound better. And then after a while, I started weaning off of it and sounding good on my own. And it, it, it's, now I can go back and forth. I can walk away from it if I want to. But, you know, it's mine. I'm, I'm not going to finish it before anybody else does. So I, it's, it's here for it's here for the long run. So, you know, mm. it, it just became a, a passion of mine very early on. So, you know, it, it's it's got to stay with me, man. I got to stick with it, you know. Oh, yeah. it's, it's something that changed the game and it changed the world. So I'm definitely not going to be the first one to let it go. <laughs> oh, no, definitely not, because it is synonymous with you and no, and your brand, no matter what. And it definitely had me vibing. I'm going to take it back a little bit here when you hit that mm -hmm. bartender. <laughs> yeah, see, I need auto-tune, you know what I'm saying, to get on your level just a little bit, just a little bit. It I'm makes gonna... everybody sound better. It makes everybody sound better. <laughs> now, also, uh, let's talk about some of your business moves here. Recently, mm -hmm, you partnered mm -hmm. with um, the platform Twitch, the gaming platform, and one of your first projects yes. with them is a song called I'm Cool With That. Tell us about the partnership, what you guys hope to accomplish, and then, you know, fill us in on how the song came about. The partnership itself is... Um you know, a, a just a way to to really highlight more smaller musical creators on the platform. So basically, I'm the music ambassador of Twitch now, which means I go through, I find smaller streamers that are that are doing music streams, and I put them in the forefront. I host them with uh, thousands of people. I, I bring thousands of people to their channel, and I basically shed light on smaller people in the industry doing music on Twitch. And that's just kind of my job to handle you know, the the traffic flow mm -hmm. of things on the platform itself. And I think that's, you know, it's pretty cool to be able to shed light on people that, you know, not only I feel like deserve it, but, you know, people have been popping up in my Twitter, like, yo, you got to check out this person, check out this person. And, uh, you know, it's it just feels good to be able to highlight people that may have 20 to 100 viewers and then just go ahead and knock them up to 3,000 real quick mm -hmm. and just have people check them out and they, they, they get more followers. I always uh, encourage my people to subscribe to their channels and, you know, it, it also helps that I, I kind of make sure I look for people that look like me as well. So, oh, you know, that yeah. <laughs> always mm. helps out. Yes, the sir. representation always helps. We don't get the, we don't get the, we don't get the spotlight a lot. So, yes, sir. you know, uh, you know, I hey, look for that well, first. You know, hats <laughs> off to you for using your platform and using your brand to, again, shine the light using technology. Nonetheless, technology is such a beautiful thing because now, again, we Absolutely. can shine a light on some really good creatives out there that just, again, don't have the ability to uh, get their work out there. But now, mm -hmm. hashtag shenanigans. I got a question. Come on now. Where, where were Come you on. at? Where were you at? How was you feeling uh, when you was talking about this bartender? Were you somewhere here in Tallahassee? What, was it the moon? No, this was um, <laughs> this was Jamaica. <laughs> okay. I was in Jamaica. Okay. I was on vacation in Jamaica. I actually have a picture of the setup. I, I gotta I gotta send y'all this picture. It's crazy. I had Please the worst do. setup of all time. It was a uh, it was just a big speaker from the airport. Uh, a crazy stupid microphone. I recorded this whole thing in the hotel room in Jamaica, and it was a uh, it was a pretty bad setup. But I made it work. Didn't have to re-record or anything. Just <laughs> just got just got back. Got back to uh, got back to Atlanta, got it mixed, and man, we put it out super like almost immediately after that. So mm -hmm. yeah, this was a hotel room. It uh it was a resort, so it was all inclusive. And you know, I was, I was just drinking a lot, and it just seemed like bartenders don't get enough credit. So I had to throw my hat in the ring there and see if I see if I can uh, get that going, and uh, I did. So, yeah, and, and you out. have done so much. It definitely worked out. The auto tunes worked out. Your career has definitely worked out for you, sir. And everybody, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't know how deep his resume is, uh, I'm looking at Spotify right now. He's on uh, The Boss with Rick Ross. Of course, we got Bartender. Uh, we got uh, Low with Slow Rider. We got uh, Close day. to You with uh, Dreezy. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And oh, again, it, it, yeah. he told you that he makes his music because he likes the way that he likes that the way that it sounds. Again, 
T-Pain. Exactly. It was so awesome having you on after six, man. Come back anytime. Man, we would love to have you. I appreciate it. Thank y'all so much, man. I appreciate it, man. Yes, sir.